Music, as many say, speaks a universal language, and one filmmaker has turned to music to craft a poignant narrative about Korean immigration to Hawaii that began in 1903. Hello and welcome to yet another edition of Issues and Insiders. I'm Min San Hee. Today, we touch upon the early stories of Koreans seeking to make Hawaii home, as shared by filmmaker Lee Jin Young. Jin Young, it's a pleasure to have you here. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Right, Jin Young, let's begin then with details about your film, Songs mm -hmm. of Love from Hawaii. Mm -hmm. What is it about? Yeah, it's a, it's a musical drama film um, that portrays the beautiful history of Korean Americans in Hawaii. Um, it was started from Hawaii, but now it's all over um, the country. And we use the music um, as a medium to tell the story. How does it differ, would you say, from other screen productions on Korean immigration to mm. foreign lands? Um, I think the integration um, of music is the biggest difference from other productions, I would say. And, and Chine, what would you say was the inspiration behind the screen production, Songs of Love from Hawaii? Mm, I, I wanted to remember, um, I wanted to preserve the beautiful history that we have. I um, grew up in Korea and um, until maybe 25 years, 25 years old, I never knew that we had a, such beautiful history um, outside of Korea as a Korean. And when I discovered this um, wonderful story, I wanted to preserve it, you know, um, so that I could share this story with others, especially the younger generation. Your film, Chin I understand it includes three episodes. Could mm -hmm. you tell us a bit about these episodes and which one resonates more for you? Uh, that's, a, that's a hard question. Um, um, okay, so it, it starts with the um, 121 years of history. In 13 minutes, we try to uh, put everything in 13 minutes with using like rare footages of images and videos and all that. And uh, we um, collaborated with the musician called Yi Gi Cheng. Um, he's a concert master of Hawaii Symphony Orchestra. And um, during these 13 minutes, we showcase um, different people, different events um, that were really crucial um, in the 121 years of history. In the second story, um, we follow a journey, personal journey of Im Mok Sun, who is a picture bride. Um, it's based on the true story. And um, that story, I think, resonates um, with me the most because it really embodies the strength of Korean women. And I, um, if you watch the film, I think you will probably think of your mom or your, your grandmother. The third story, uh, we follow a journey of Kim Chun Sok, just like Im Mok Sun, um, Kim Chun Suk is also a person who lived um, in Hawaii, who lived, um, who left Korea for Hawaii uh, with a big dream. But he ended up in a place called Kalau Papa of Hawaii. It's a it's a it's a colony. Um, it was used to be a colony of for the patients with Hansen's disease, and there was one um, this guy whose name was Kim Chun Suk that was brought to. Kalau Papa, not because he had a Hansen's disease, but because he couldn't speak English. And, and they thought that, you know, um, he had a Hansen's disease, but he died there. And when I first heard the story, um, I wanted to honor his life and others who were living there with the music. So we went there um, and we performed the music for the souls there. Right. Your film, Chin Young, seeks to inform, educate, as you mm. just mentioned, the story of these remarkable people. So you're seeking to educate your audiences with factual information while at the same time keep them entertained. How do you seek to incorporate these two aspects of education and entertainment in your screen production? Yeah, that's a, that's a really a key, um, a very important part of my film. And I always try to um, achieve that goal of having the balance between um, the educational aspect and the entertainment at the same time. Um, for the education part, you know, we really hard, try hard to um, have this you know, accuracy in history um, as we share a lot of historical facts. And we got a lot of ass assistance from experts in the field um, for his, sometimes historian, sometimes advisory board um, that are really specialized in this specific area um, of the time. And for the entertainment part, um, we integrated like animation and also music 
was one of the way to make it more um, interesting, especially for younger generations. Right, for sure. Jin Young, Songs of Love from Hawaii, it's your second screen project I'm yes. aware, and it uh, expands on your first project called exactly. Words of Wisdom from the Rainbow State. I have to say, I love the titles of your productions. Oh, now, tell you. us a bit about your sc first screen work mm. and what was the response that it garnered? Yeah, um, so Words of Wisdom from the Rainbow State. So Rainbow State, um, can, you, can you guess? The Rainbow State Hawaii. refers to exactly. Um, Hawaii is known to be a, um, like a real multicultural society, multicultural community. People live there you know, very harmoniously. I think um, it comes all the way from plantation area. Like Korean was there as immigrants, but also there were Chinese or there were Japanese and Portuguese who were there to work um, in the plantation for better lives. Um, so in the words of wisdom from the rainbow state, I wanted to record those early immigrants' um, life because like, it's amazing to see how there were like first Korean chief justice, first Korean mayor in the United States. Those were all from Hawaii. It's because, again, um, they are the children of those early immigrants. And if you think about it, people went there to work in the plantation. They worked really hard and to raise their kids to be uh, really a contributing members of the society. I just wanted to see what the secrets are, you know, what, you know, what were the words of wisdom that you received from your parents? Would you share that with us? That was the starting point of the interview. And I had the um, privilege to have this interview with five different people who are descendants of those early Korean immigrants. And luckily, um, you know, all thanks to those wisdoms that they shared with us, um, it was it received a lot of um, awards from you know international film festivals and now it's archived in the Korean National Archive system. Right, Jin Young. Ultimately, what do you hope audiences will take away from your screen productions? These mm. two words of wisdom from the Rainbow State and love songs of love from Hawaii. Yeah, um, yeah. I find my passion um, in archiving these stories and sharing with others because I do believe that. We have such beautiful, um, such beautiful stories in our history and that are very universal. Um, it's not just the Korean story, the sacrifice, the, the love, the resilience. It's just amazing um, how much we have, you know, those beautiful values in our history. And um, through my production, although it's not perfect, it's a, you know, um, it's a humble, like a humble job, humble work that I, that I do within my own little capacity. But through that, I want viewers to see how much love that we have received from um, our ancestors. And hopefully, eventually, it, if it reminds us the responsibility that we have for our future generation, then, you know, that'd be great. Right. Jin you spent like 10 years in, mm. the, in journalism prior mm. to becoming a filmmaker. Um, how was that transition mm. triggered? What made you shift careers from being a, a bit of a news anchor mm. to becoming a filmmaker? Yeah, right. Um, I know I get that. I get the questions a lot. I guess it's a little bit unique um, um, to come to the filmmaking from journalism. But um, if you think about it, like as a journalist, I'm sure you can understand too. Um, I always been trying to find stories that are important but not known or or less known, I should say. And when I discovered this Korean American stories while I was working as a journalist, when I was meeting um, this Chief Justice Moon or Mayor Harry Kim, again, they are the descendants of Korean immigrants, early Korean immigrants, I, I knew that I found the stories that I want to um, tell like for many, many years, because I do really believe that this is such an important um, story to tell. Right, for sure. And, and staying with that, Jin who are some of the filmmakers, perhaps, who you believe have helped shape your own screen style? Mm, um, there are so many filmmakers I really do admire. But for this specific pro um, project, Songs of Love, I should say I drew more inspiration from the musicians that I worked with. Like Richard Young Jae Onyer, Chi Yeon, Yi Gi Jung, and Kiola Beamer, they're all world class musicians, but um, I learned so much from them. Like, for example, Kiola Beamer, the, the guitarist who you can see there, 
Um, he's a local legend in Hawaii. Um, but not only his musical talent, but he, how he interacts with people, how he treats uh, people in Hawaii, and how, how uh, like his attitude toward making the music really were inspirational. And also, um, I enjoy classics, whether it's literature or music, because classic is the, you know, it, it is a history, right? Accumulation of history, and, and it, it gives very profound insights, I think, and that's what I try to, um, I strive to, to have it in my own production. Simply speaking, Shin, how long did the entire project take from mm. planning up until it hit the screens? Sure, um, yeah, it took me about like maybe three and a half years. Yeah, first, for the first year it was just a planning. For the next year, I applied to different grants to get the money to make this happen. And then the last year was like or editing, um, color grading and all that. And the special thing about that um, is like filming was happening in, in, in Hawaii. But then like editing and you know, the post-production was a lot of it was happening in Korea. And so many people um, contributed their time and talent because it's, you know, it's a non-profit film studio that I run as a solo um, player. And because many people believe that this is such a beautiful, you know, important history, like all the musicians and also Sumi Jo, who's a you know, well-known soprano of Korea, they all donated their time and talent. And I, I do really feel grateful for right. the collaboration that we had. And on a more personal level, Ji Young, do walk us through your journey from South Korea to Hawaii. Mm. You mentioned earlier that you left the country when you were 25. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> a lot of people ask, uh, they think that I maybe was born and raised in Hawaii because I tell a story of Hawaii. But um, I was born in Korea. Um, I live right down the street from this studio. I went to, I did all schoolings in Korea until um, university. And I moved to Hawaii because at first I was fascinated by its nature, you know, landscape. Like we were just talking about how beautiful Hawaii was when you visited. Visited in 2019. 2019 with, for your family um, reunion. And so that's what, that's what I um, decided to, that's, what, why, that's why I decided to move to Hawaii at first. But after working there after maybe four or five years, I discovered this story and I, Really, it was almost shocking. Like, how did I not know this, you know, story that we had such amazing stories? And after that, um, I really um, had like true love for Hawaii. I think because at first when I moved to Hawaii, even though I was the one who wanted to go to Hawaii, it was challenging to live as a as an immigrant. Um, everything was new. I missed my family and friends a lot, but. Um, when I discovered the story of Korean American history that started from Hawaii, I first, for the first time, started to feel like Hawaii is also my land, not just the land for Hawaiians, because that's where our ancestors lived and where they start their own life. Um, and from that point, I really felt comfortable living in Hawaii and I can call it my home now comfortably. So whenever I have an opportunity to talk to um, especially students um, outside of Korea, whether it's the US or China or Japan, I always tell them, I always encourage them to uh, look for their own roots, their parents' story, how Koreans started their lives in their own land. Then you can really res resonate. Um, you, know, you can see this land is also your land and you can start your own life there. Do you suppose your life beyond South Korea perhaps nurtured within you a greater appreciation for Korea's cultural values? Oh, oh most definitely. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, when you live outside of country, outside of Korea, you appreciate more, not just the Korean um, land or tteokbokki or Korean food or your parents, but the, but the value that Koreans put in so much, like through the process of making songs of love, I just felt so grateful um, to 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 uh, be raised in a culture where, um, like, love is really important. Like, sacrifice for your for the people that you love. Um, those are really beautiful, I, I I think. And and it's amazing that even though people live outside of country, we still um, keep that value. We still really, you know, precious. Like, it's such a precious value that we need to um, keep and share with 
the future generations as Very well, cool. I believe. And we'll get a chance to do that when your second film, uh, Songs of Love from Hawaii, hits mm. screens here in Korea in late October. What are some of your related plans? Yes, um, we were so excited to have this um, Nation, nationwide um, theater release in Korea because it's not it's not very common to have a low budget film like ours to have such such big um, offer. We're, we're having an exclusive um, screening with the CGV, and it will be over um, all around the country. Um, but to have the film for more than a week or more than two weeks, we really need to have the audiences, um, people to come to the theater to watch it. So. Um, if you believe in, you know, what we talked about today, if you think that um, history is important, and please come and watch um, our film in theater and also support our cause. If you go to our website, you can um, find the ways to support our cause to share our work with um, more generation. Right, of course. Generation. Songs of Love from Hawaii <laughs> will be hitting local theatres on October 30th. Yes. All right, Chinyang, thank you so much for making the time to be here with us to talk about your film. Thank mm. you. Thank you so much. <laughs> right, well, that is all the time we have for this edition of Issues and Insiders. Thank you for watching. <laughs>